Hello, welcome back to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and uh, today I'm going to share with you some Christian fiction books I found that are releasing in February 2023. Um, as always, if you know of any other ones, please do leave them down in the comments. And as we're going through, also let me know in the comments if any of the books sound like ones that you would like to read in the future. I've made a number of these videos before, so if you've missed any, I'll leave the playlist down in the description and there are a number of different videos that you can look through to get some backlist suggestions of Christian fiction books. As always, I will group them into different genres and I'm just going to read out the first part of the description, so um, I will leave a link to the blog post in the description box below so that you can read the whole um, the whole description if you want to. I feel like I said description several times now. <laughs> Let's have a look at the books. So in historical fiction, In Spotlight and Shadow by Rachel Scott McDaniel is published by Barber Fiction and releases on the 1st of February. Elise Malvin has a habit of letting people down her former boyfriend who hoped she'd be his bride, her grandfather who hoped she'd take over the family's auction company, but mostly she's disappointed herself. What's the point of pursuing her passion as a violinist if she is too scared to audition for a seat in the Pittsburgh Symphony? Her internship at the elegant Heinz Hall places her in the wings of the stage, but never on it. By accident, she discovers an old stage prop her instincts tell her there's more to the paste necklace than meets the eye. A century earlier, Sophie Walters longs for sta centre stage, her name on the marquee and all that jazz, but climbing her way into an acting career is more difficult than she imagined. Having spoiled all her chances in Hollywood, she returns to Pittsburgh accepting an insignificant role as a popular production in a popular production. She watches her dreams pass by from the curtain as the illus illustrious Low Pens Theatre. She finally gets the coveted spotlight, but not for her talent. The Cairo Curse by Pepper Basham is published by Barber Fiction and it releases on the 1st of February and this is book two in the Frederick and Grace Mysteries. Clue meets Indiana Jones with a fiction-loving twist only Grace Percy can provide. Newlyweds Lord and Lady Astley have already experienced their fair share of suspense, but when a honeymoon trip takes a detour to the mystical land of Egypt, not even Grace with her fiction-loving mind is prepared for the dangers in store. From an assortment of untrustworthy adventure seekers to a newly discovered tomb with a murderous secret, Frederick and Grace must lean on each other to navigate their dangerous surroundings. The Sound of Light by Sarah Sundin it's published by Ravel and it releases on the 7th of February. When the Germans march into Denmark, Baron Heinrich Al... <laughs> I don't think I can pronounce that name. Alifeld exchanges his nobility for an anonymity, assuming a new identity so he can secretly row messages for the Danish resistance across the waters to Sweden. American physicist Dr. Elsie Jensen refuses to leave Copenhagen and abandon her research, her live stream, while printing resistance newspapers she hears stories of the movement's legendary Havmond, the Merman, and wonders if the mysterious and silent shipyard worker living in the same boarding house has something to hide. Double the Lies by Patricia Rayburn is book two in the Annalie Spain mystery series and it's published by Tyndale and releases on the 7th of February. In the second instalment of Patricia Rayburn's critically acclaimed mystery series, amateur detective Annalie Spain races the clock to solve the murder of a handsome young pilot before she is framed for the crime and before his dashing twin falls head over heels for her, tempting her promised heart. The Way to Air by Kimberly Duffy is published by Bethany House and it releases on the 7th of February. In 1911, Mabel McGuinness is Europe's strongest woman and has performed beside her father in the Manzo Brothers Circus her entire life. But at his unexpected death, she loses everything she's ever known and sets off in the company of acrobat Jake Cunningham for America in hopes of finding the mother she's just discovered is still alive. 
Isabella Moreau, the nation's most fated aerialist, has given everything to the circus, but age and injury now threaten her security, and Isabella, stalked by old fears, makes a choice that risks everything. The Last Chance Cowboy by Jodie Headland is book four in the Colorado Cowboy series. It's published by Bethany House and releases on the 14th of February. As a midwife, Catherine Remington is successful in bringing new life into the world, but she's failed one too many times in finding true love. When she's accused of a murder she didn't commit, she's forced to flee and decides to run away to Colorado to honour a patient's dying wish to deliver a newborn infant to his father. The repentant prodigal Dylan McQuaid is finally back in fair play. Elected as sheriff, he's doing his best to prove to the town he's a changed man and worthy of their trust. When a woman shows up with an infant son he didn't know he had, Dylan is left with only complicated choices on what to do next. The Maid of Bally McCool by Jennifer Dybal is published by Ravel and releases on the 21st of February. Brianna Kelly was abandoned at Bally McCool House and boarding school as an infant. She has worked there since she was a wee girl and will likely die there, despite a sense that she was made for something more. Brianna feels powerless to change her situation, so she consoles herself by exploring the Bally McCool grounds, looking for hidden treasures to add to the secret trove beneath the floorboards of her room. When Michael Ray, the son of local gentry, is sent to Bally McCool to deal with his unruly cousin, he finds himself drawn to Brianna, immediately and inescapably. There is something about her that feels so familiar. A Match in the Making by Jen Tirano is published by Bethany House and this releases on the 21st of February. Miss Gwendolyn Brinley accepted a temporary paid companion post position for the Newport summer season, believing it would be a lark to spend the summer in America's most elus- exclusive town. She suddenly finds her summer turning anything but amusing when her employer expects her to take over responsibilities as an assistant matchmaker. Tasked with the daunting prospect of attaining advantageous matches for her clients, Gwendolyn soon finds herself in the company of Mr Walter Townsend, the catch of the season, but a gentleman Gwendolyn finds beyond annoying. Walter is reluctantly in search of a wife for his unruly motherless children, What he wasn't expecting was Miss Brinley, who turns his quest for a new wife into a complete and utter debacle. Forged in Love by Mary Keneally is published by Bethany House, and it releases on the 28th of February. In 1870, Mariah Stover is left for dead, and with no memory when the Dead Eye Gang robs the stagecoach she's on, killing her father and brother, as she takes over her father's blacksmith business, and attempts to move forward, the old-fashioned townspeople meet her new occupation with disdain. Handsome and polished Clint Roberts escaped to western Wyoming from the painful memories he left back east. In the hope of a new life, he opens a diner where he creates fine dishes, but is met with a harsh welcome from the townsfolk who prefer to stick to their old ways. In Mystery and Suspense, Cold Light of Day by Elizabeth Goddard is the first book in her Missing in Alaska series, and it's published by Ravel and releases on the 7th of February. Police Chief Autumn Long is fighting to keep her job in the quiet Alaska town of Shadow Gap when an unexpected string of criminal activity leaves her with a wounded officer, unexplained murders and even an attack on her own father. Despite her mistrust for out- of outsiders, she turns to Greer Brenner, a newcomer who seems to have the skills and training Autumn needs to face this threat to her community. Greer is in Alaska for the same reason so many others are, to disappear when Chief Long enlists his help. He emerges from the shadows and proves his mettle, but his presence in her life could be a deadly trap for them both. If his secret is exposed, all will be lost, and he's not sure even Autumn could save him. In contemporary fiction... Della and Darby by Susanna B. Lewis is published by Thomas Nelson and it releases on the 7th of February. Della and Darby Red are twins, but they couldn't be more different. Della is outspoken and eccentric and Darby is introverted and avoids conversation where possible. As they approach their 30th birthday, they're single and living with their grandmother, Birdie. 
Della wants nothing more than to find love and be accepted by her former schoolmates at Clay Station, Mississippi, but Darby couldn't care less. She is content coming home from her factory job each day to curl up on the couch and watch Murder, She Wrote with Birdie and write poems in her journal. Della falls in love with her boss, Dr Brian Faulkner, and Darby finds unexpected friendship in her goofy co-worker, Cliff Waters. Because of her friendship with Cliff, Darby uncovers terrible truths about Della's crush. So it sounds like that one is like a mixture of a family relationship alongside some romance. Um, specifically listed under contemporary romance is Winning His Trust by Tony Shiloh. This is published by Love Inspired and releases on the 21st of February. To build a future together, they must both let go of the past. Returning home after a bad breakup, Jordan Wood is eager to prove she can run her family's store. Setting up a partnership with Declan Porter's struggling adventure business might do the trick, but the handsome single dad is set in his ways, in business and in love. Can winning his and his son's heart help them all heal? In children's fiction, The Architect by Jonathan Starrett is published by Tyndale, and it releases on the 7th of February. Amazon says it's aimed at 8 to 12 year olds. There's a golden rule in Phantom City, no one about when the Zeppelin is out. But one night, 12 year old Charlie Crane comes face to face with the Zeppelin, and instead of finding trouble, she's awakened. Determined to find the truth in a city plagued with lies, Charlie, along with a quirky band of unlikely heroes, works to free the people of Phantom City from the clutches of a shadowy evil villain. In fantasy and sci-fi, Bear Knight by James R. Hannibal um, is going to be released. It is the Light Raider Academy book 2. It's published by Enclave, releases on the 14th of February. Amazon says it's aimed at 13 to 18 year olds. So I'll read the first book's description because I think there'll be some spoilers in the second book. The fate of the Dragonlands are at play. The Knights of the Light Raider Order disappeared nearly two generations past. Now the Caledon have withdrawn behind their barriers, and the dragon lands of bordering Tenelathar are overrun with dark oppression. The people are living in disobedience to the rescuer who freed them long ago. A shepherd boy, Connor Inarian, and four young initiates re rekindle the fires of the Light Raider Order in the hope of striking out across the mountains into the Tenelathar to destroy a portal and stop an impending invasion. And finally, I found two books in biblical fiction coming out. Daughter of Eden by Jill Eileen Smith is published by Ravel and releases on the 14th of February. The first time she opens her eyes, Eve gazes on one whose beauty nearly blinds her, whose breath is in her lungs. Her creator takes her hand and gives her to one like her and yet different. Together she and Adam experience pure joy as they explore Eden, but her favourite moments are when the creator comes to walk with them day after day. Until everything changes, with one act of disobedience, Eve finds that her world is no longer a friendly place. With remorse in her heart, she must face the unknown future, the births, the deaths, the sacrifices, the loss of the one home she can, has ever known. And lastly, Son of Man by Charles Martin is published by Thomas Nelson and is released on the 21st of February. Experience the Bible come to life before your eyes as New York Times best-selling author Charles Martin uses his storyteller's imagination to present the life of Jesus in a way that will engage your faith in new ways. This collection of more than 20 short stories compiled from Martin's books What If It's True and They Turn the World Upside Down draws you into a deeper understanding and love for the Saviour. Son of Man presents key moments from the life and ministry of Jesus Christ and explores the lives of his followers in descriptive novelistic words. Son of Man is perfect for someone who loves Christian fiction. So that seems to be a, a short story collection. Okay, so those books were all listed as Christian fiction on Amazon. That doesn't mean that they have a huge amount of faith in every single one of them. Um, some of them may be just Christian friendly. Some of them may have proper full-on Christian content in the stories. Um, I can't tell from the description of all of them um, where they will fall in that uh, category. Let me know down in the comments if any of those sound like books that you would like to read in the future. I hope that was helpful. If it was, please give it a like and a share. 
and subscribe if you're not already done so and please do comment in the comments below I do love to hear from you it makes it more like a community and not just me talking into a camera okay I hope you have a really great reading week until next time god bless bye Thank you.